Today we'll be doing a couple of recipes out of uh, The New Art of Cookery by Juan Altamiras, and this was printed in about 1750. This book is a reinterpretation or uh, let's say translation by Vicki Hayward. Excellent book. Let's get started. So let me read to you this translation of uh, Altamiris' recipe. This was just salmon. He says, fresh salmon is best boiled and served with a little fresh olive oil and sharp citrus juice or fried onion and salt. Salted salmon needs soaking in clean running water for a full day and a night like tuna, then scoured with new esparto grass before cooking. Such cleanliness, though learned not, is not natural, is enough to make you a fine cook. Serve this salmon with a dusting of pepper and a jug of fresh olive oil. Very, very interesting recipe for what it's got there and what it doesn't have there. Um, and of course, we'll be using fresh salmon, not the, um, the salted salmon, which I'm not sure where I would get salted salmon from these days, but that in the time period was the inexpensive alternative to fresh salmon. This recipe, we're going to start off with the onions. Uh, this one's pretty simple. We're going to take about a pound of onions, cut them nice and fine, and these are going to go into a pan with four tablespoons of olive oil. Now, this is meant to cook very slowly over a very low fire. So I've picked here uh, a cast iron pan to cook these in because I want something that I can control the heat with. If I had a nice thin pan, Boy, it can get hot or cold very, very rapidly, so I want something with a lot of body to it. In the time period, they might have used, uh, say, a, um, a ceramic pot or a ceramic kind of pan that would cook these very slowly. So uh, we're going we're gonna to brown these onions, actually not brown them, but uh, very slowly fry them uh, for about an hour. So about halfway through here, um, I've added some saffron water and some salt and pepper. So what's happening here is it's like kind of boiling off the, the water that's in the onions and kind of cooking that off. And now I'm gonna add a little bit more water back in with the saffron water and let it cook for another half hour. Very, very low, very slow, and stirring it so that it doesn't burn. So my onions are still cooking. They're gently cooking. I'm gonna keep my eye on them and keep them stirring. Now we can start the next spot. Uh, part of this recipe, which has to do with the salmon. Now, I've already got some uh, pre-prepared, uh, cut up, beautiful salmon steaks that we're going to be cooking. Now, he calls them, he just says, boil them. Of course, in other parts of the cookbook, he actually kind of goes into more uh, depth about cooking fish, and he references boiling these very gently. Uh, that's one of the tricks with these old recipe books, is that they they weren't their vocabulary wasn't as big for cooking as we have today and we will of course poach these uh salmon steaks he just used boil they probably would have understood it in a time period as a very gentle simmer now many times in these cookbooks or in these situations in 18th century cooking if they wanted to cook something very gently, they would actually use a ceramic vessel. They had all kinds of different kinds of cooking vessels and something that's very common in the 18th century for English cooking and especially for French and other continental cooking is to use a ceramic vessel for cooking things very gently, very slowly. So we're gonna, we're gonna actually poach our uh, salmon in this uh, clay cooking pot today. So I've got my pot, uh, my ceramic pot here on the low fire and I just let it heat up just a little bit. If we put this on a, fi on a fire without having anything in it, it'll probably bust and crack. These kinds of things are really meant to be heated very evenly. So uh, once this kind of gets up to a simmer, because I, I poured boiling water into it, uh, once it comes back up into a simmer, I'm gonna slip the fish in here and uh, get it cooking. So while our fish is poaching, let me tell you a little bit more about this particular uh, cookbook and why I find it so very, very interesting. So published about uh, right there, about 1750 or so. And the very, very interesting thing beyond the fact that this is Spanish cooking and there are these very, very interesting similarities and differences between English cookery and Spanish cookery at the time period. The interesting thing about this cookbook is that this author 
doesn't just pick out the high-end cookery, which is very easy to find in uh, cookbooks, especially, say, earlier 17th century cookbooks. Those were generally court cookery or, you know, cookbooks for people with a lot of money, and so they would have a fancy cooking in it. This particular cookbook by this friar is full of things that were let's say of modest means. So uh, inexpensive cookery, and those can be very difficult to find. So it's got a, a, a different glimpse into cookery than we might find in a, a lot of different period cookbooks. Excellent, excellent book. And this particular author, this modern author who reinterprets these things, does a really good job of connecting them with modern Spanish cookery. Um, it might not be perfect if you're trying to understand exactly what it was like in the 18th century, but when we try to incorporate these into our modern palette, uh, she does such an excellent job. So excellent, excellent cookbook. Well, there's our salmon on top of our bed of uh, onions. Looks wonderful. I've got a little bit of lemon here. I mean, he talks about several different ways that you could actually serve this with just uh, fresh olive oil and a little bit of lemon or serve it on this uh, bed of onion, yeah, bed of onions. Um, and we've got a little bit of parsley here, which uh, was mentioned in the recipe. Let's give this a try, see how it turned out. Let's see here, whoop. Mmm, boy, that is tremendous. The, um, the onions are just really good with this fish. What a wonderful combination of these wonderful sweet onions, this really interesting texture on the onions. It was so softly, you know, gently cooked and they've got a little bit of spice in there, you know, the pepper. You could add a little bit of garlic to it or whatever that's in some of these recipes. Um, along with this uh, gently cooked fish, which is so wonderful and tender and that isn't, you know, fishy flavored in, in the least, especially the way this was cooked, gently poached. So uh, it's a great combination of flavors.